What's up, Taiwan? I'm Eric Gao with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Starting off with diplomatic news, it is confirmed Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen met the U.S. Democratic Party's top leader in the House of Representatives, Hakeem Jeffries. The president's office says Tsai met with Jeffries in New York last Thursday. It says she thanked the House Minority Leader for Congress's strong support for Taiwan. Tsai also met senators from both parties the following day. The presidential office had not confirmed the news till now. Meetings like these are sensitive because China often reacts angrily to them. Chinese authorities claim Taiwan as their own, even though they have never controlled the island. Meanwhile, China has announced it is conducting maritime inspection operations in the Taiwan Strait. This comes as President Tsai prepares to meet with U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy in California. According to Chinese state media, this operation will last seven days. It's not yet clear how many vessels are taking part in the operation. The founder of Apple supplier Foxconn and one of Taiwan's richest people, Terry Guo, has announced that he will run for president. Rick Glauer reports. Terry Gore, the billionaire founder of Foxconn, which manufactures Apple products, arrives back in Taiwan after a trip to the U.S. And at the airport, a big announcement. He wants to be Taiwan's next president. This is not 72-year-old Gore's first bid for Taiwan's top job. In 2019, he lost out on the nomination for candidate for opposition party, the Kuomintang, or KMT. He later quit the party, which he apologized for profusely as he made his bid to represent the KMT at next year's elections. Despite big wins in local elections last year, polls show support is slumping for a KMT presidency. The party is beset by controversy and infighting, but has said they will pick their candidate by mid-June. A high-profile figure like Gore could prove popular with voters. Taiwan's ruling party, the Democratic Progressive Party, or the DPP, has only one candidate in mind. Vice President Lai ching de is seen as a natural successor to largely popular current President Tsai Ing-wen, who cannot run because of two-term limits. Presidential elections here in Taiwan are now than less than one year away, and there's plenty at stake from the rising cost of living to facing up to the threat from China. All eyes are now on the KMT and whether they think a figure like Gore can help turn things around for the party. Leon Lien and Rick Lauert in Taoyuan for Taiwan Plus. The cost of everyday essentials here in Taiwan continues to rise. Pork is the latest item to hit record high prices. Shoppers picking up their daily essentials, and in Taiwan, that almost always includes pork. But these people are finding their money doesn't buy as much meat as it once did. The price of pork has hit a record, just as demand is high. The annual tomb sweeping festival began in April. It's a time when Taiwanese people present offerings to their ancestors, and a prime cut of pork is a popular choice. This has caused prices to go up by almost 10 percent over the past week, to over three U.S. dollars per kilo. Taiwan is a country of pork lovers, with each person consuming about 35 kilograms each year. That's 12 kilograms more than the average American. Authorities have taken drastic action to try and stabilize prices, closing meat markets for three days. But experts say the effect will be limited. Many pigs have died due to disease in recent months. And the cost of animal feed is also growing more expensive as the war in Ukraine hits corn supplies. It's not just meat markets that are dealing with higher prices. Cheap pork may be a thing of the past, so restaurants are also being forced to raise prices, driving up wider inflation. And that means less money in people's pockets. Tuesday was Children's Day here in Taiwan, and crowds celebrating the occasion have been flooding family-friendly venues this week. 
Children's Day is part of a five-day public holiday that also includes the Tomb Souping Festival. During this time, children under the age of 12 are granted free entry to a number of attractions and events around the country, and that includes Taiwan zoos, which have seen huge crowds and long lines. Amusement parks have also been packed with families out for a day of fun and excitement. Visitors have been waiting in line for up to half an hour for each attraction. It's not all good news for kids, though. A recent survey found that Taiwan's children are becoming more stressed and unhappy. But the group behind the survey says there are steps that Taiwan can take to reverse this trend. John Van Trieste has this report. Amusement parks and zoos across the country filled with kids enjoying a day out as Taiwan marked Children's Day on Tuesday. But survey results released the same day suggest Taiwan's children aren't always so happy. Taiwan-based NGO, the Child Welfare League Foundation, surveyed over 1,800 elementary and middle school students across the country on their happiness. The survey results found the happiness levels of Taiwan's kids at 73.5 points out of 100. That's down from 74 points from a similar survey conducted last year. It's also close to nine points below the world average, according to WHO findings. Data suggests that Taiwan's high-pressure, exam-heavy school system is a big reason why. Other issues include a lack of family time and parental support. Then there are feelings of isolation and insignificance. 15% of respondents said they feel lonely, and nearly 30% said they felt it wouldn't make a difference to the world if they weren't in it. The Child Welfare League Foundation has some recommendations for boosting children's happiness. It says kids need to get more exercise and have more sleep. The NGO hopes the survey will spark some reflections on what else Taiwan can do to make itself into a more child-friendly society and a place where all children can grow up happy. Damon Lin and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Twelve Vietnamese migrants have been found on a boat off Taiwan's southern coast. They are suspected of trying to enter the country illegally. The Coast Guard issued this statement. The discovery of the migrants comes after at least 20 corpses were found on Taiwan's west coast over the past two months. Of those, seven were Vietnamese nationals. Officials are investigating whether human traffickers are responsible for those deaths. In international news, Russia has charged a woman with terrorism over an explosion that killed a pro-Moscow blogger. Prosecutors allege Daria Tripova was behind the blast in St. Petersburg on Sunday. The charges carry a maximum jail sentence of 20 years. The explosion killed Vladin Tatarsky, a vocal supporter of Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Russian officials say Tripova acted on instructions from people working for Ukraine. In Bangladesh, a massive fire has destroyed thousands of stores at a market in the capital, Dhaka. The fire started early Tuesday morning. Hundreds of firefighters and army personnel were sent to extinguish the blaze. So far, no casualties have been reported, but authorities say they don't know if any people were inside the market when the fire started. The cause of the fire is also currently unknown. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, check out these jumbo Easter eggs being painted in Chile's capital of Santiago. I'm Eric Gao. Take care and see you next time.